Thank you for joining us today on 10 Minutes with the Artist, an episodic series that explores the art practice and the personal vision that guides artists. On today's episode, we're very proud to have Ty England, who is completing his master's in architecture at North Dakota State University. We invited him here today to speak about his research and the creation of artifacts in preparation of his defense. Mental layers is a structure built from wood and broken concrete blocks that symbolizes the power depression can have on our minds. The work relies on real or perceived connections a viewer makes as they transition around the work and relate the associations they see from their past experience with their present situation. I'm Anthony Ferris, and this is 10 Minutes with the Artist. Hi, thank you so very much for joining us today on 10 Minutes with the Artist. So when my uncle used to go travel, uh, he would bring us back a rock from whatever place he went to. Mm -hmm. So curious what you thought Sigmund Freud would say about something like that. Um, I think it definitely would represent a memory that he may have had or maybe an experience that might trigger a memory for yourself. Um, something that lay deep within our unconscious that is brought to light through the conscious world. Okay. And um, so like say I, I have this rock and I put it on my mantle or something like that. What does sort of like placement and um, um, how I organize objects, uh, how does that sort of integrate into your architecture or your artifact? Yeah, so I think definitely placement of objects is um, important because it definitely brings light um, more viscerally than if you were to hide it away. Um, like you had said, if you place it on a mantle, maybe that's something you see every day, reminding you of an experience, something you've had. Um, as far as my artifact, that's, that is my overall intention, is to remind us of things that have happened in our past um, that may not be brought up unless we experience it. And as well, in my architecture, um, the pathways and journeys that the users take will allow us to kind of rediscover things that maybe have influenced us in a negative way and bring them to light, and then hopefully transforming that in a cathartic way. Um, do you think that the, um, the spaces that we make to keep the objects um, themselves affect our understanding of the objects? Yes, I would agree. Um, or I would say yes, because I think the way you approach an object is incredibly particular. You know, you place something in the front, you place something in the back, and how it's arranged. Um, so for my artifact, as you experience it and as you move through the shelving system, you actually come into contact with a rougher side versus a smoother side, kind of revealing and concealing sort of how you may be uh, uh, rough on the outside, soft on the inside, and kind of vice versa. So, yeah. so your work, uh includes objects that are in these modules, okay? Um, so there's a relationship between the module and, or like the object and the module of itself. And then there's this strange sort of connection between the modules um, and another module. Yep. Um, why is that important? Well, it's important to me to make clear distinctions between something that is right in front of you and something that is further away. So as you experience my artifact and as you move through it, um, you begin to make connections between what's in front of you and what you can see in, in farther in front of you. And then as you are moving through, you're able to make connections to something that once happened again. So it's kind of this um, cyclical process where we're able to make connections within our lives, um, something that I'm hoping to incorporate within my final thesis here. Okay, and how does that work into your architecture? Um, I think definitely the movement through spaces can help us, or can create feelings. Um, one of the overall important goals of an architect is to instill a feeling within the space. Um, for me, it, it might be a feeling of confusion, it might be a feeling of loss or um, excitement, something that can help us recall certain events in our, in our past, um, bring them to light, and then um, in the overall process kind of reveal a cathartic um, healing um, through the movement of the spaces. Okay, can you talk a little bit about maybe the, the space that your, um, uh, your architecture will actually be in? Yeah, so I'm, I'm designing a, a mental health retreat for those who suffer from depression and anxiety. Um, my goal is to, um, my building, I want to be quote unquote the psychologist. So I want my building to be the one that is helping us uh, resolve some of these issues that we may have had. And then taking that, what is experienced there, and carrying that through their everyday lives. Um, it is a biannual event, so if you return, or if you come in the winter, you must return in the summer, and kind of vice versa, to really get an, a, a change of season effect on us as well. Because I think 
um, being located in Minnesota, where my site is, uh, we definitely have seasonal depression um, with our long winters, clearly, and how that can kind of play into effect in our everyday lives. Are there other ways that sort of transition fits into your architecture? Absolutely. Uh, transition through space is a big one. Um, definitely going from more of the private personal areas to resting chambers and quarters um, to more public spaces where you are communicating with other people or with a psychologist or therapist um, and how you can kind of bridge that um, transition space so it's not so black and white and kind of ease into that. Okay. Yeah. And um, is there a hierarchy when we're like, when I'm thinking about your artifact uh, specifically, uh, there's things on the top, things that are on the bottom, things that are sort of like um, almost seem like they might fall off, some that are held by gravity. Uh, is there a hierarchy to how I should read this? Um, uh, slightly, yes. I would say the, the heavier objects are grounded towards more of the bottom. Um, and that represents some of, my artifact is made out of concrete and cement pieces, and that represents architecturally the fact that we use concrete to ground us. Um, and so the heavier objects are located on the ground, lighter on top, and sort of um, this play with depth and um, weight in a sense, and how that can in turn um, represent sort of depth and weight within depression and anxiety. Uh, one thing that I really love about uh, these sort of pieces is that uh, it's not just uh, a blueprint and it's not just a, uh, a model. Uh, with the artifact, you're actually creating a structure that people have to sort of physically interact with. Um, can you talk a little bit about maybe some of the iterations of the way that you sort of got to the the final product? Yeah, most definitely. Well, originally it was they were stacked on top of each other and it was supposed to kind of be a, a movement through the eyes and sort of a visual movement um, as you make your way up and down the process. But then, you know, relating it to architecture, we move through space. We physically move through space. And how can I do that? And so I disassembled it, kind of laid it in a layering effect. Um, and allowed it to be a very cubistic approach to how we can see one thing and, and see something far away and begin to make those connections as we physically move through space. Okay. At the end of our um, um, conversation, we'd like to ask a few questions about your creative practice. Mm -hmm. So uh, what time of day do you think that you feel most creative? Night, for sure. I'm a night owl. Um, I usually stay up pretty late and getting work done. And I feel like that's when I'm most awake and I'm able to kind of really process things and get them out and open. Yeah. Um, do you listen to music or anything like that when you're making work? Um, I do very, very quietly um, on a very low setting. Very soft music, classical music, just jazz type stuff just to kind of keep it moving and keep my brain kind of in the zone. Okay. Is there anything that you're reading right now? I am not. Other than all the requirements that we have to read for uh, studio, um, no, nothing that's kind of grabbing out to me, yeah. Okay. And uh, is, if you had to work in a different medium than maybe the medium that you're working in right now, what do you think that would be? As in like architecture? Or? Yeah, maybe architecture or? Um, hmm, that's a good question. Probably, honestly, probably psychology because I'm just fascinated on how we think and how we act and how our minds work, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, and uh, how do you know that you're finished when you're creating a structure or a blueprint or a artifact? I guess what I've learned through school is nothing is ever completely finished. There's always something we could do. Um, however, we do work with timelines and, and deadlines. And so I think for me, it's just when I'm most comfortable with this is solid work and I'm, I'm confident presenting it and how it turned out. Okay. And I guess my last question would be, uh, what's next for you? What's next is graduation. Um, hopefully working for a firm and kind of developing everything I need to become a licensed architect. Okay, well, so. congratulations. Thank you so very much for joining us today. Um, I'd also like to thank you for your time and your interest in the professional practice and the creative explorations happening here at North Dakota State University. So thank you, and for everyone here at the Memorial Union Gallery, keep creative.